the three things that you ask me, Romy, first, I mean, the views of the conference, a few words on the Dutch approach on food and nutrition security, uh, and in particular, maybe something about what we call in the branding the Dutch diamond approach. Um, what I've done is I have a, um, I have sent you uh, of the donor platform a short report of the economist meeting, uh, which has been written by my colleagues. Uh, I've sent you a slide, which I see now it's uh, <clears throat> is actually on the two for one slide, and I will send you a booklet, which uh, which uh, a booklet which we have produced about zero hunger and zero malnutrition, and I'm not sure you can see that booklet. This is sort of a booklet, uh, how it looks like. It gives an introduction in the approach we do and about 11 examples of food and nutrition security initiatives which we have been taking, which are representative, let's say, are representative for the work we do. Uh, maybe first, uh, Romy uh, and, uh, and colleagues, a few introductory remarks on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for which I work. Uh, we have a minister which is now called the Minister of International Trade and Development Cooperation. And that is new. That never existed before. Because it, before we had a Minister of Development Cooperation. And never that combination with trade. This signifies the importance of my government that economic development, let's say, and development cooperation will need to go hand in glove. Uh, aid where it is needed, trade where it is possible. So we will have a transition from a transitional aid to more a, a, an approach of modern aid in synergy with trade. So that combination is, uh, is, is uh, key. Um, if you then look to the, to, the, to the food and nutrition security approach, this is based on four pillars. First of all, is an avenue which we say we need to produce more and more sustainable in agriculture. That is one point. Second point of focus is that we have to make sure that, that more people have better access to a healthier food. So this is about the quality of food. The first target was about the quality of food. The third point of focus is the, let's say, uh, to help build markets that work for the poor. And you see here that making markets work as a, as a locally here is something which has a quite a, an importance because without these markets, I mean, people would have no access, of course, to food. And the fourth one is to help develop an environment where private sector where business could do its work. So these are the four pillars. So more and sustainable production, access to healthier food, markets that work for the poor, and first and fourthly is a, an environment where a, the, the private sector could operate. Uh, and these four are going hand in hand in our partner countries where food security is on the, on the agenda. Now, if you go to the London meeting, so this was the background. Now, to the London meeting, um, I was uh, privileged to say to uh, to kick off that meeting. Uh, and when you kick off a meeting, you don't start explaining, I mean, what the Dutch approach is, and then you start more in general asking questions where the conference should focus on. And one of the introductory remarks I made is, if, if we say is we need to feed the world, the question is who needs to feed the world. I mean, who is responsible for this? Is this a business responsibility? Is it a government responsibility? I mean, if we say we, is it who is it? That is my first point. The second point I've made is I see a transition, let's say, from food security to nutrition security. Where you see, initially we had, we only talked about food security, more production. Then we talked about food security and nutrition. If you look to the title of David Nambaro, for example, his, his title is a special representative for food security and nutrition. We're now moving slowly to, in, to, a, to, a, to a, what I call food and nutrition security area. And I would believe maybe we're going to move to eventually nutrition security at the end of the day. What you see is that food security is, is, the, is, the, is an enabler. 
is a is a means to nutrition security eventually as a goal. So food security in itself is not enough. So you will need to include nutrition in that equation here. That's the way we probably will need to move in here. Uh, the points I've made, and I made only one slide for that panel. I had 10 minutes to introduce that. And that is a two for one slide. Uh, mainly saying there are we are facing two big challenges globally here. The first challenge, which is the challenge of eradicating hunger and malnutrition, which is about 850 million people going to bed hungry every day. That's an acute problem. We need to fix that. That is an issue of 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 accessibility. So people do not have access to the food they acquire, although we produce enough to serve the world today. And the second challenge is that in 2050, we are about 10 billion people. We have to make sure the food is available at that time to serve the needs and wants of these people. So two distinct problems, let's say fixing the hunger problem uh, today, which is an issue of accessibility and the availability issue of feeding 10 billion people round and about, around, let's say, mid the century here. If these are the two, let's say, major challenges here, there are four sectors in play. It's government, it is business, it is civil society, and knowledge institutes. That's an area where we have built our branding, what we call the Dutch Diamond Approach. So those four sectors will need to work, let's say, closer together, I would say, hand in glove, to make, let's say, nutrition solutions, which none of these sectors can do alone. As we would say here, nobody is as smart as all of us. So you will need to bring their skills and competencies together to build these solutions locally. I mean, let's, I mean, I always say this, we need to find local solutions for local problems. So we don't develop these in the Hague here. If it doesn't fit, let's say the local the local let's say problems here it is important that that they do i mean they're not being developed behind my desk of course in the hague so that that is a very important part so therefore you need to include let's say the local the local context and therefore you have that's the one of the two for one you work as one on one agenda so two distinct challenges four sectors in play one agenda, one approach. This is, in my view, absolutely key. Then, of course, I participated also in a panel which we made a few points, and one of them is that the word consumer, you don't find in any of these documents easily. People talk about, we need to serve the poor. We need to make sure the poor have access to X, Y, and Z. But we never see them as consumers. So. I believe that if we would see, let's say, the poor more as consumers, which have their own needs and their own wants and their own aspirations here, if we would include them, let's say, in building solutions, I think we're much better off than just serving those people which are not served today in here as, 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 as non-consumers. I believe this is important. So also, it's important that if you would look to the whole value chain, and you look from production to processing and distribution, and then at the end of that chain, you have the consumer. Try to put this chain upside down and put those people central. And said, let's put those underserved consumers central and then build a system which would serve their nutrition needs and wants. And then you will, you will end up eventually with agriculture to say, what is it we need to put on the land in here? How do we process these, uh, these, these crops, etc., storage, processing, distribution, in order to preserve, let's say, the best nutrition these crops can give? I believe that if you would sometimes, let's say, put upside down this value chain, starting with the consumer, gives a perspective which is, a, uh, I must say, could be remarkably clear in what needs to be done, let's say, in each and every country here. This, was a, this meeting in London was a meeting which was, I mean, part of a sort of a roadshow that The Economist was doing. And you mentioned Romy earlier, 
the Amsterdam meeting was there. It's a meeting where they were keeping up the momentum, let's say, on the advocacy and the need to do something here. Uh, we should not overestimate, of course, the outcome of these meetings, eh? because I made a challenge to say that the poor are not waiting for another meeting in London by top-ranking people here to talk about their problems in the end. And they would say, that's fine. I mean, let's walk the talk. Let's take this action here. Let things go in. I see this as a general problem, I must say, overall, that you see major initiatives. And this morning, just an hour ago, we had a conversation with, uh, with Jonathan Schreier, which is the, the, the special representative for the U.S. government on food security here, that there are so many big initiatives here which seems to be, let's say, disconnected. You have Feed the Future, Nutrition for Growth. You have all sorts of bigger initiatives here to say, could we connect here more and better what we do here in order to, let's say, secure a return on investment, which is higher than we have today here. So, yes, important to have meetings to keep up, let's say, the global spirit and advocacy for helping the poor and feeding the 10 billion people tomorrow here. But at the same time, we have to make sure we are actually taking a next step here at the country level here, jointly, one agenda here to, uh, to serve the needs of those people. That is in a, and I think probably around 15 minutes are gone here. We have sent you, a, 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 uh, the people, a, um, uh, a, a document which we have internally distributed and I felt it was good enough, actually, just to put it uh, externally here. Uh, we've been pretty open on this in here to to read what basically has been on the agenda here. <coughs> Apologies. I must say, a, a, in many of these meetings, you don't see business a lot, but because this was organized by the Economist, I don't think it was a lack of business for me over there, isn't it? Eh? Some key people, and I must say, very business-friendly, very business-orientated. And what I see is, and I travel to these meetings, more and more you see that business are being recognized as, as, a, as a partner, more and more. I know that's not easy for many sectors, but if they start to see that the private sector has something to offer, then you see there is a more interest to work. And also, finally, maybe words here, because I do come, and people may not know this, but I do come from the private sector, I have a history in the private sector here, I see that the private sector and in particular multinationals are more and more interested in, uh, in more and more interested in ensuring a healthy society, because that would be the basis for them to do a better business in the future. So you see them more and more investing in society, basically because their view is that you can't build a healthy business in a failing society. So investing in that society is key for business. At the same time, you look at governments, which cannot continue to feed their own people here, looking to business, because they have, well, I mean, they have capabilities and skills which the government doesn't have. So what you see is they are starting to move closer together in here into, let's say, common agendas. Of course, each partner would have his own individual agenda, but the more there is a space now for collective agendas, and that's why you see these major initiatives around the globe on this issue, which 10 years ago, nobody talked about. Nobody talked about the Christian security 10 years ago, because people didn't feel it was a big issue to be tackled. And now you see that there is a big movement, also because the science is there, there is global leadership through the Sun movement, and we know there is an economic value to investing in attrition. So you see, I mean, I'm extremely happy that I see these things coming together. So I'm looking forward that my colleagues of, uh, let's say, the donor part is also more and more embracing, let's say, such an approach, because I firmly believe at the end of the day, we're probably more successful collectively. I was very interested in your last sentence of saying the private sector is more and more interested to ensure a healthy society. 
I, I've been watching those conferences, uh, and uh, obviously I wasn't there, but I watched it from afar, and I also saw the huge adverts Syngenta had in The Economist, especially uh, edition for the conference. I, I'm, I'm sure you saw it as well, where they present their good growth plan. And I think that goes in line with what you said uh, about the interest to in ensure a healthy society. They have a few very ambitious goals there, like reaching 2 million smallholders uh, to increase their productivity. Did you hear more about this, or are you in, um, informed about this good growth plan of Syngenta? Thank you. I'm not sure where the situation. I must say that uh, that uh, that uh, I may be being very general speaking about the private sector, but you have all sorts of private sector, of course, like you have all sorts of scientists and all sorts of NGOs and all sorts of governments. Uh, it is important if you work, let's say, with the private sector, the the there is a, attached to a a set of criteria on corporate social responsibility. Uh, 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 that is important that you work with, let's say, those, let's say, private sector partners who have a good stance towards, let's say, a development. And they have made development also core of their business. Uh, that is, in, that is very, I mean, I would be, I mean, I come from the private sector, I would be very critical for that. Because uh, it's, it's important that business does its role as business, but at the same time, there is a responsibility towards society here. And you see that multinationals take more and more that role. Well, if you then talk about, let's say, the whole seed industry, uh, it is a, it's, it, some people will find it a difficult part because uh, they feel that you make farmers dependent on your seed production and fertilizers, eh? like Syngenta and like, uh, like uh, 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 Monsanto, et cetera, here. Still, I would believe that the investments they do from the seed industry and producing, let's say, varieties which are, I mean, have a much better fit for what the needs and wants are of people in developing countries, that is a, 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 a good opportunity to have a, a, a let's say, a, a, a crop, I um, a crop value, which would help those people at the end of the day also doing a better business in the uh, uh, so on the good growth fund and good sorry good growth uh, uh, um, initiative in reaching two billion farmers are ambitious plans of course which need to be taken step by step. Uh, but we need to follow that. I mean also as donors closely follow that, see where you can actually work with them together, also as partners. Uh, I haven't said that, but uh, the position of the Dutch government is uh, is. Not necessarily to work as a donor, but more and more to work as a partner in here. That if you have your own, let's say, uh, goals and achievements to be made here, you team up, let's say, with other sectors here, you are part and parcel of, of, of achieving, let's say, a common goal which you agree to. Uh, if you look for a company which I work for also, I mean, this, which is Unilever, I mean, they also have the ambition to reach, let's say, a, a I think 500 thousand farmers just to make sure they secure their own supply chain. Is it a bad idea? I said, well, maybe not. Maybe this is a win-win if they do it well, of course, in here. And you see that particularly in the tea sector, but also in the sector of tomatoes and the palm oil, you see that. And because this is a big company, they are very much in the, I say that, the, uh, visible in what they do. And you see there's something there, and you know, jump on these bigger organizations to do things better than they did yesterday here. You see that those organizations uh, also take more responsibility for a bigger part of the value chain. And not just what is coming out of it, but also where is it produced, how is it produced, will people have better lives, uh, and are they more... Uh, are they also able to look after their own food security, not all our food security, but also their own food security? So I see movements here of, 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 of engagement of the private sector, which are coming into an area where governments are also looking for. Uh, my name is Aaron Boxbaum. I work um, as a researcher and in knowledge management 
for a USAID, United States Agency of International Development uh, project focused on nutrition outcomes for women and children. Um, and my question, Paulus, you, uh, you hit on a really important point that I contend with very regularly in the work that I'm doing, um, which is on coordination of major initiatives, essentially. Um, I'm at a spot where Within, we do a lot of work within Feed the Future, and so our project specifically does a lot of things to try and connect, you know, the broadly the agricultural sector with the nutrition sector and try to get this idea of integration and kind of synergy happening. And I'm really wondering from your perspective, you know, you mentioned Feed the Future, you mentioned Nutrition for Growth, you were talking about, you know, the, the Dutch Diamond approach. And I'm wondering, from your perspective, what are some good ways that we can kind of keep these efforts to coordinate these different initiatives happening and, and moving forward? Could you speak about your perspective on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the same question I asked Jonathan Fryer, which you probably know this one now. <laughs> But it was when I was, uh, uh, I was coordinating a meeting uh, with him and a uh, record people. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I said to him in closing that session an hour ago, I mean, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that you see Feed the Future, and the Fish for Growth, New Alliance, I mean, what have you. What you see is that nutrition was on none of these agendas, I mean, probably six, seven years ago. I can recall when I was a role in the game, in the gain organization that I traveled also to Japan on pre meetings on G8, just to make sure that people knew why nutrition is important. And now, of course, it is important. I mean, with the great initiative of Hillary Clinton with the thousand days, etc. So the whole movement starts now. People get interested, they see the problem, they start to see the solutions here. And now you see all sorts of initiatives here to say, okay, I mean, I, I understand them. But there is a, we clearly have a management issue here, a management issue to ensure that these initiatives do not compete, that they are clear and transparent to what they want to achieve and where. And I, I would believe there is value in creating a management structure who bring those different initiatives, which, I mean, may have a, a, a reality of life, of course, today here, but are connected to individually and collectively more deliver than they do today here. I mean, I don't have the answer, Aaron. I mean, how to do that? I only see the need. Well, the, the, your reference to the Dutch Diamond, this is simply an enabler. I mean, this is an enabler to say how you could actually achieve that. I mean, this could be fit in any of these. I don't think there's anything new on the Dutch Diamond here. But I mean, the way it comes about and the ease that the Dutch uh, historically, we go about achieving, let's say, difficult uh, uh, solution. Uh, well, achieve uh, solving. I mean, tough problems here is by sitting together and, and and fix it. I mean, that's in our culture. So that's why we have built this into a sort of a, a a an enabling facility here, the Dutch Diamond, which could be, of course, with any of these uh, big programs. But I do see a need that these programs are getting better connected today. And I don't have the answer to that apart from, let's say, going around and also saying to, to, to Jonathan Schreier is to make sure we build a good management structure over and above, let's say, these, uh, these initiatives here, and which is accepted, of course, by others. Could it be the sun? Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe the scaling of the Christian movement, which now have the, let's say, the whole, let's say, business uh, uh, sector attached to that. We find all four sectors under the same process, I mean, is there some, uh, let's say, initiative who could be more leading than others? I mean, I don't know. It, it, this very much depends on people and mindset. Huh? Um, I'd like to comment on the previous discussion on how the different initiatives uh, would uh, be coordinated more and further in order to be more effective together, uh, working as different uh, sectors together, but also working for the same objectives together. And I think an important answer to the question, like how could we do this, is the agenda of uh, Busan on effective development cooperation and the principles that were agreed upon earlier in the Paris and Accra conference. Uh, the key thing is that within countries, also governments take the lead, have a very clear agenda for food and nutrition security and take their responsibility. 
So that was my suggestion. I don't have any need. Well, my question would be on another topic on the international conference or ICN conference too. If there's room to have a few uh, pieces of information on that. Yeah. I hope you could hear me. Thank you. The, uh, well, the first part, uh, yeah, I think you're fully right. I mean, ownership should be within countries. And I've said before, if a government is not interested to invest in here, you need to ask yourself the point, is it worthwhile actually to be there at all? Because at the end of the day, you need to move in and help, help people help them themselves. That's the ultimate goal. So, I mean, the people which are providing help, which they need and they want, two different things, by the way, eh? what they need and what they want, not what we want, but what they want here is crucial. And I, if we start here, there should already be an extra strategy here that countries could stay on their own eventually. That should be the goal. Otherwise, you are making these countries dependent all over, and we can't do that. So there should be a clear, uh, let's say, guidance and uh, and uh, and drive from the local, from the national local, let's say, governments uh, to do this. Uh, and maybe uh, you're right. Maybe that these should, let's say, help coordinate various initiatives within the, within the country. I'm saying that with some ease because if I look to our own situation in the Netherlands, we are facing the same issue, by the way. Eh? So we have three challenge, three channels for the funding, which on one hand is to civil society, it's on one hand to multilateral organizations, and it is thirdly through our embassies here. And sometimes they're totally not connected here. So things we're working ourselves here is to get our own house in order, just to make sure that if they're all working in the same country here, they're building one on the other. And we're not doing separate things uh, in here. Um, um, well, simply, I mean, if the way you would do your own, I mean, in my own, uh, let's say, uh, family, I do the thing, I would do, do the, need to do the same, this the same thing, of course, when we do for work for the government in here. So. Uh, it is, but this very much depends, I think, on the position of the governments and, and people. Now the ICN. That is a. I was in the in a meeting in the ICN meeting in September, I think it was in Rome. Was it a three-day pre-preparatory uh, meeting in September, where we felt there was a huge gap between the organisers and the position of some sectors, a particular civil society and business. Uh, this took a few days actually before it was uh, became, I must say, with difficulty in acceptance that all sectors should become part of, let's say, the ICM2, which is going to take place, of course, yet this year. Uh, I, I made a plea also there that within the ICN, which, as you know, is being organized by both the FAO and the WHO, that on nutrition, I mean, all the four, I mean, big UN, big UN organizations, which also includes the World Food Program and UNICEF, would actually operate as one. Uh, it, this seems difficult if I see that. Uh, it is so if you see the, the, the ambition of the UN to work as one, I would still room for improvement in the field of nutrition. There was a discussion also, of course, on what, is, what would the outcome look like? And that's a question I ask. Where are you looking for, for an outcome in this particular field in here? And I do hope that this will actually integrate the, the ongoing activities which are there today here into further, in particular, positioning the governments in this, in this field in here. It will not be an easy road. That's what I see to get to the ICN2. Uh, 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 I'm not personally involved in that. Uh, 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 I mean, I've been talks, of course, with people here. But at the end of the day, it would be a great opportunity, actually, in this meeting here, to get something off the ground, a second, let's say, international conference on nutrition here, to build that momentum of nutrition today here, with, let's say, all the sectors in place in here. I do foresee, of course, a difficult time. Uh, heading up to this uh, conference uh, later this uh, this year. I've asked uh, also uh, to uh, to the European Union, to uh, Jean Pierre uh, Jean Pierre, is that that uh, that there may be an option here 
that the EU would coordinate, let's say, the individual member states more than they do today here. Uh, that they're not, let's say, a, a, another member state here, but it's taking their role and bringing together the various views of the member states here into the ICN. This Aaron uh, uh, Buxbaum, who asked the question on uh, combining this, this has an answer or a view himself on this. In fact, it's maybe the same answer that you gave, which is that it's it boils down to something of a management issue, definitely sort of a, an organizational uh, and sort of institutional communication issue. Um, we, you know, a lot of the work that I'm involved with right now is at a fairly small level, um, meaning that literally trying to figure out, say, within a USAID mission, how to improve the, the, the communication and the planning and the program design between, you know, the people who are sitting in the economic development office and the agricultural office and people sitting in the health and the nutrition, even trying to push that into um, water hygiene and san uh, water hygiene and sanitation. Um, and there really, there is no easy way to do it, but it's really, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe the Dutch culture is, is ahead of the curve and just sitting down you know, setting up regular organization mechanisms that involve these different sides, sitting down, putting what their, you know, their metrics are, what they're being held accountable to on the table, putting forth their theories of development, trying to find the common bridges between those things, and then be able to, to programmatically make something work, you know, through that discussion. And that's really the, you know, the best that we have right now. And so it's, it's just trying to identify ways of thinking that, you know, different sectors and different mentalities can get behind and then using those to go ahead and design your programs together. Yeah, yeah, okay, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, we need also to find a, a, a sensible approach. Uh, I work for World Vision International, so from the nonprofit side of things, um, and people on the ground who are implementing some of the programs that you all uh, support us with, I would just say that I think there's maybe more coordination than some of you feel because we do see things, for example, we see where there's um, perhaps uh, an opportunity we might work on um, or we might pursue for a project and we see that um, the donor who's putting forth the offer and another donor government will actually, it, it seems that, that they're talking about the opportunity and coordinating on whether or not to give it, how to give it, who to give it to based on their mutual interests. Um, again, I don't have the insight, I can't say it's definitely happening, but that's how it appears to us um, in terms of the timing of things and opportunities. Or maybe everyone is just all thinking the same thing at the same time. But it does seem like perhaps there's more coordination on the donor end um, than sometimes perhaps some of you feel. Good to hear. Thank you, Carrie. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Paulus, and all who have been participating in the discussion. So I'm Mariana Sexola, and I'm working like a, as a counselor of rural development at the Embassy of Finland in Nairobi. And uh, I'm really sorry I came late, so I thought I only was hearing the discussion. Uh, I have to say I was participating um, two years ago in the economic conference in uh, Pretoria. Uh, for Food for All, I think it was called then. And uh, there the main speaker was uh, Krasa Marcel, and uh, his like, final wording was that uh, we yeah. know like, the solution, how to have food or to feed all in the world, but we should not work in the silos. And what I was catching from your discussion, I, I think this uh, uh, continues the problem. And uh, I can tell, like, example from here, from Kenya, we did the mapping of the different agriculture and food security programs which are ongoing here in Kenya. So we had 360 agriculture programs and 100 food security programs. And uh, there has been a lot of discussions how we could coordinate more, how we could work more together, but that's still very much an ongoing process and we don't have a solution. But from the platform side, so uh, I 
I want be all the members from the Secretariat of the platform correct if I'm wrong, but I think the platform can serve also in the future like a discussion uh, and network place where we can discuss and see how we could better uh, coordinate the activities if it is locally or internationally. So uh, I think we have to improve our work in this part. So I'm grateful I've been able to share this with you. Eh? So uh, it's it's in it's important that uh, this work is work of people and mindset. Eh? And then of course you have the methodology there, but it's very much about people and relationships that will actually bring this further here. If you believe that in one of your future meetings you find it useful actually to to further this discussion, I mean I'm happy to come over to a, a, a next meeting here. To, uh, to process progress what we have been doing today.